Right, so I'm going to, in 15 minutes or so, try and give you an overview of all the types of funding. <laughs> Probably not going to quite get through all of it. Um, but I'm Ella Romanos. I run a company called Fundamentally Games. One of our key focuses is consulting with developers to help them raise finance and also working with investors to set up and manage funds. Um, so this talk is going to be based on this website, finances.fundamentallygames.com, which is a free directory that we maintain of all of the finances that we're aware of that invest in UK companies. So I'm going to talk through kind of the different types of funding that we have, different types of funders. But, you know, if you want to look at the companies that are involved, many of whom are here today, please take a look at this website in your own time. So broadly, there are six types of funding. So you've got equity, project, grants, debts, debt accelerator, and crowdfunding. I'm not going to talk about work for hire because this is very specifically about external sources of funding. So first of all, equity. There's a lot of different types of equity financing. In fact, Sebastian covered a few of them a minute ago. Um, but the most important thing is that they're all different. They're all needed at different times of your journey. Uh, and it's really important to understand what is out there and the different, different things and what is suitable for you. So these are some examples, um, in particular, quite the ones in bold are all here today. So you're going to, I don't want to go into too much detail because they can all cover them. But how many people know what SEIS and EIS is? Okay, cool. So these are government tax incentives to encourage investors to invest in startups and high-risk businesses. It's very powerful. Um, I believe it's one of the main reasons that we have good investment into startups in this industry and in the UK. Um, Funds will normally either focus on SEIS or on both. So SEIS is Seed Enterprise Investment Scheme. You can get up to £150,000 into a startup business. Um, and EIS is funding up into the millions. The benefit of this is that uh, the investors get a huge amount of tax relief, even if they lose their money. And that's the important thing. So for a startup, for an investor investing in you, it's huge because if they, even if they lose the money, they still get some tax relief. You tend to get two types of funds, and I think this is something that a lot of people aren't necessarily aware of. You get those who raise the money into their fund, they have the money sat there, and then they deploy it. Okay? Then you have the other type, which is they will work with you to raise the money. And it is very, and it's very important to understand the difference, because if you go to a fund who already has the money, fairly straightforward, it's what you would imagine. But there are quite a lot of funds out there who will work with you. And the benefit of this is it's much more tailored, um, but equally... They are working with you and therefore there might be some more upfront costs. And understanding which of those each fund you're going to is very important. Um, some of those that hit Media Group, Ingenious Play, Oxford Capital, and there are several others out there. Angels, um, hopefully you all know what angels are, but essentially high net worth individuals who invest personally. We're actually quite lucky to have a couple here today, Paul Hayden and David Helgerson. Um, Obviously, these people invest directly with their own money. Therefore, obviously, they're looking for commercially viable product, projects, but they're also generally looking for things that they're interested in personally. The challenge with these is finding them. Like I said, we're quite lucky to have a couple here today, but usually these guys don't have websites, they don't advertise themselves. So it's all about your network, and it's all about getting to know people who might be interested in your business. There are angel networks around the UK, regionally and nationally, the challenge from personal experience is that a lot of those, the people in it don't know about games, and that can be quite difficult. So usually, from what I've seen, angel investors that invest in games are within the industry, and it's all about building who you know and your network. I always hesitate to put this in because obviously it's not available to everyone, but the reason I put it in is because it's, really imp it's important to know that a lot of people do get funding this way. Friends and family will often step in right at the beginning when, frankly, it's too risky for anyone else. So it is important to be aware that that does happen, and you know, if you do have access to that, that's a really big bonus. And they'll often, obviously, put money in on softer terms than some commercial investors. And then you've got VCs. Um, I'm sure most people here have heard of London Venture Partners, Atomico, Initial Capital, again, all here today. VCs come in a huge different shapes and sizes, um, they're all looking for really high potential growth businesses. As in, you know, they may probably want the potential to get 10 times their money back. So these are the guys you go to when you've got something that you really think can grow. And they're looking for the next big thing. So I think uh, Sebastian mentioned earlier, you know, mobile 
and free to play was the next big thing. What's the next big thing now? The way to find out, look at what they've recently invested in. But only go to these guys when you know that you've got a good, strong proposition that could make a huge amount of money. Um, some will fund from very startup phase. Others are a bit further on. Um, they usually specialize in one or more industries. So um, London Venture Partners being an example, focus on games. Others will have multiple sectors, but you generally want to go to those who understand games. Otherwise, you're gonna, the, the risk profile of the games industry is very different to others. So you kind of want someone who understands what you're trying to do. Um, then strategics. Again, we've got Wargaming, Supercell, Jagex. All of these guys are looking to invest, obviously for commercial gain, but also the strategic vision of their company. So they're looking for, you know, this is what their vision is. What can you add to that? And then you've got private equity and investment banks. Um, these obviously are not for startups. These are when you're more looking to grow. You're already a revenue generating business. Um, you're looking for significant capital to scale. So generally, you know, equity investors are looking to make more money than they would if they put your money, if they put their money in a bank, fundamentally. The more risk they're willing to take, the more potential return they want to get. But investors are people and you have to build a relationship with them, find out what they're doing, find out what they're interested in, and be able to work with them. You know, it's a two-way relationship. Um, and also be aware, you know, these people are going to be in your business a long time. They may want to sit on your board. They may be in your business for five years or more. This is a long-term relationship. And they're also probably going to want to know what your exit strategy is. It's something that a lot of pitches I see don't have. You know, how are they going to exit eventually? What are their expectations? What kind of time period does this particular investor, it, how long do they want to be in your business? Is it they want to be out in two years? Are they willing to be in for 10? Understanding all these things and asking those questions to them is really important to make your pitch relevant and increase the chances that you're talking to the right people. So then you've got project financing. Now, project finance uh, developers because the, the, um, the funder is only involved in your project and not in your business long term. Um, but you know, project financing, actually, there's not a huge number of companies that do it. The most well-known is publishers. Um, these really vary. Some will fund development, some will only fund marketing, some will get involved early, some want data. Um, and obviously their priorities change over time. So really the only way to know who to pitch to is to talk to them. You know, speak to these guys, find out what their focus is, pitch to the ones that are relevant to you. And then you've got project funds. Now, again, Kowloon Knights are here, so that, you know, they'll talk more about that. And there are a few others like Alt Adventures and so on. Um, but we did until last year have a bit more project financing in the UK. I don't know how many people are aware of the changes to the SEIS, EIS rules last year. Okay, so basically what, is, what there's a few changes, but broadly, um, SEIS and EIS now only qualifies if you're, if you're a business that is gonna grow. Whereas before it was being used a lot more for project financing, that's now not allowed. And therefore, a lot of the funds who were doing, using SEIS for project financing are now focusing more on equity and long-term growth. So it's something that I hope people are starting to be aware of, but we've seen several cases over the last year of people applying for SEIS and EIS and failing. So it's HMRC are being pretty stringent on it. And it's really, really important if you're looking to raise investment that you make yourself aware of the changes. This uh, link here is an article that myself and my colleague wrote about it. Obviously, you should get tax advice. I'm not a tax advisor. But if you are looking to raise money, it's a really important thing that you should be aware of. Then you've got grants. So there are different types of grants, public and private. Uh, public, probably the most well-known is the UK Games Fund, uh, who brilliant fund, very oversubscribed because, you know, they don't have, a huge, they have enough money but not a huge amount and a, a lot of developers want it. Um, there's also Innovate UK and obviously video games tax relief comes in arrears but I'm putting it into this category because obviously it helps you to fund your game. Um, and then you've got private grants, so these generally come through like Unreal, Dev Grants, Arts Council and so on. Um, public funds will generally invest in high-risk businesses. Their whole remit really should be to, to, take, to invest where private can't. So bridging that gap and enabling businesses to get to the point where they can raise private money. Um, 
In the case of public funds, in some cases, the people don't know your industry. Obviously, the UK Games Fund does, but not all of them do. So it can be quite challenging to explain what you're doing. There can be a lot of admin and paperwork. Um, and from my own experience, you could literally spend your life applying to public grants. Um, my suggestion would be don't try to crowbar your project to fit a fund. If you find a fund that genuinely fits what you're doing, brilliant. But you could go down a little a rabbit hole of applying and relying on grants for the rest of your career. So they really have a good place, but uh, there can be a lot of time in applying and in managing them once you've got the money. So debt. Um, often when we talk about debt, people think about banks, which obviously they are there. Um, but it's often very difficult for developers to get anything decent in bank financing, particularly when you're a startup. Um, so then the other things to be aware of is, you know, private loans. So you can get loans, particularly like authentic media and headgear. They will, fa they will provide loans against things like video games tax relief. Um, obviously, Bravo talked about UA factoring, which is another option. Um, and you've also got investor debt. So if you're taking on an investor, they may partly give you your money in debt as well. And that, that isn't a bad thing necessarily. So that's worth being aware of. And then accelerators. Um, so two types of accelerators really, equity and no equity. Generally, if they're giving you actual cash, they'll want some form of equity in return. But the main thing with accelerators is that you know, they're providing more than investment. The money is really to help you through the program. If you just want money, an accelerator is not for you. If you want the support, the mentoring, um, you know, that, that network and that program around you, this is perfect. The money will just enable you to do that. It's particularly good for startups who perhaps haven't been in industry before, who need mentors and that sort of framework around them to do that. And most funds, most accelerators will give anything from £5,000 to £100,000, depending on the fund. Um, some of them are specific to games, like game founders. Um, others, like tech stars and so on, are more general to tech. Um, I really, I think accelerators are a great program for the right people. And then you've got crowdfunding. So um, crowdfunding is, in my experience, the hardest type of funding you can ever raise. And I think, like, whereas a few years ago, everybody was really excited by Kickstarter, and obviously it's still a good option. I think people perhaps are a bit more realistic. Um, but having done a Kickstarter myself, um, I would say it's probably the hardest thing you can do. Um, but obviously there, are, there is project-based crowdfunding like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and so on. And I would even put, uh, arguably. Um, and then you've got equity crowdfunding like Cedars and Crowdcubes. And then obviously you've got IPOs, which if you think Kickstarters are the Wild West, IPOs are like even more so. Um, and probably even harder than they were a year ago. So just a few kind of general tips. There is a huge amount of finance available, and there is more and more every year. We're quite lucky, I believe, in this industry. It's growing. However, that means that it's a minefield. Every single person, every single fund has a different remit. They invest a different amount of money. They have different requirements. Understanding that landscape can take a huge amount of time, but it's really important that you do do it. Um, you need to understand what each remit is, what everybody's motivations are, and the only way to do that, really, is to come to events like this and meet them. And that's the most important thing. You need somebody in your company who's going to be doing that. Um, get help and advice where you can. You know, we talk to a lot of developers. We give them advice on a tailored basis. There are a lot of people out there who will help. And in, again, in my experience, most of the funds out there, if you just ask, that, go and ask them, what are you looking for? What's your remit? How much money can you put in? Ask them questions. That's what they're there for. They want to help, and they want to help you to understand what they're doing. Um, investors will be in your business for a long time. It's a two-way relationship. You know, you've got to be happy with them being in your business and happy working with you. Um, it, it should be mutual respect. And in, again, in my experience, most investors are like that, but it's really, really important that these are people you feel you can work with. And I think the most important thing is funding is a journey. It's not a one-off thing that you do and then get on with making your game. If you're running a business, you're going to be raising funding probably at several stages. Sebastian touched on that a minute ago, but you know, at different points, you might raise equity, you might raise debt, you, and, and understanding what that journey might look like and all the different options that you might need to get there is really, really important.